All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The Nimba video is a historical facts that mess with your sense of time. Let's check it out. When we try to put historical events into perspective, we often simplistically divide things into old days and modern times right. because our brains can often struggle with the perception of time. I compiled a series of interesting facts on historical events that surprisingly took place at more or less the same time, turning them into real and pretty fascinating coincidences and will make you think twice about how you perceive the past. Number one, the same tortoise belonged to both Charles Darwin and Steve Irwin. Harriet the tortoise was reportedly collected by Charles Darwin during his 1835 visit to the Galapagos Islands as part of his round the world survey expedition then transported to England and then brought to her final home, Australia, by a retiring captain of the Beagle, the ship Darwin used for his expedition. And as we all know, tortoises can live quite a very long, long time. Very, and very by long. a hilarious turn of events, Harriet turned up in Steve Irwin's zoo. That's right, the pet tortoise of Charles Darwin was adopted by the legendary crocodile hunter. However, some doubt was cast on this story by okay. the fact that Darwin had never visited the island that Harriet originally came from. Anyhow, she had an estimated age of 175 by the time she finally died at Steve Irwin's zoo. Number two, today's oldest living tree was already... One Is that a real story, guys? I mean, it's, it's super fantastical, right? I mean, if it's a factual statement, then wow, literally. 1,000 years old when the last woolly mammoth died. The world's oldest tree is a Great Basin bristlecone pine located in White Mountains, California, and is dated at around 5,000 years old. To okay. put that into perspective, isolated populations of woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island didn't finally go extinct until 4,000 years ago. With the small island in the Arctic Ocean serving as a sanctuary for the great beasts after they were forced from the mainland by humans and climate change. Number 3. Woolly mammoths were still alive while Egyptians were building the pyramids. I think this fact is more popular nowadays but I still want to include it since it's a true classic. <laughs> Scientists have determined that woolly mammoths were still roaming the earth until about 1650 BC. Well, yeah, the, the different, different place, obviously. Meanwhile, the oldest of the Great Pyramids in Egypt, the Pyramid of Djoser was constructed between 2630 BC and 2611 BC, meaning that while man was busy building some of the most incredible structures ever made, woolly mammoths were still doing their thing. Number four, Mahatma Gandhi and Jack the Ripper. Gandhi is so bound up with the titanic events of the 20th century that it might be peculiar to imagine him as a dapper gentleman of Victorian society. But that's exactly what he became while studying law in London, arriving in September 1888, right in the midst of the Jack the Ripper killings. Gandhi obviously had nothing to do with the Jack the Ripper killings. Potentially. But it's funny to think about the fact that Gandhi could have become a suspect in the most famous murder case. Number five, Nintendo was founded when Jack the Ripper was still on the loose. Even though Jack the Ripper and Nintendo were around during the same time, he never got the chance to play classics like Zelda and Mario. They originally made playing cards called Hanafuda, and the okay, company was okay. founded way back in 1889 all right, all right, when the bro. infamous Jack the Ripper was creating havoc on the streets of London. His murder spree happened only about a year before Nintendo came into existence. Number six, Star Wars came out the same year as the last guillotine execution in France. When thinking about guillotine executions, our minds wander to historic. Okay, yeah, this is a very good video, guys. Figures like Napoleon. Because, yeah, I would have never guessed. This one here, is very specifically, is kind of throwing me a little bit. But this form of execution isn't that old. Right. Star Wars premiered in the United States on May 25th, 1977. At the same time, this futuristic sci-fi was wowing audiences around the world. The medieval practice of death by guillotine was still taking place in France, where Hamida pimp killer Jandubi was beheaded for the torture and murder of a young woman. This was the last use of the guillotine in France. Nobody else has been executed using any means since. So technically, it is possible that people in France. were talking about the upcoming Star Wars movie while watching the last guillotine execution. Number seven, you could take the London Underground to the last public hanging in the UK. We continue on with the topic of public executions, but we travel to Britain. Hanging okay. used to be a common punishment in the UK and wasn't abolished until 1868. Right. Michael Barrett was the last to be executed in this manner in Newgate Prison, London, in front of a large crowd of people. Five years earlier in 1863, the first journey of the London Underground took place. With a station in operation close by the Newgate prison, it is entirely feasible that many Londoners would take the tube to go and watch somebody get hanged. What a very convenient situation. Absolutely. Number eight. 
prisoners arrived at Auschwitz just days after McDonald's was founded. While McDonald's is traditionally associated with the good times and affluence of 1950s America, the very first restaurant was opened much earlier, on May 15, 1940. At the same time, one of the most gruesome events in human history began in Europe. Just five days after McDonald's grand opening, the first prisoners arrived at the Auschwitz concentration camp in what is now Poland. Number 9. The fax machine was invented the same year the first wagon crossed the Oregon Trail. We all know the story of the Oregon Trail, since it's an important... Okay, yeah, you got to thoroughly explain this one, bro. ...wagon crossed the Oregon Trail. We all know the story of the Oregon Trail, since it's an important part of American history. Right. However, what many don't know is that at the same time the first wagon traversed this trail, an important technological milestone was achieved. The original fax machine, the electric printing telegraph, was patented in 1843 by Scottish inventor Alexander Bain. Okay, okay. If it was just patented at that very specific time, did they have actually one that was functioning? Was it being used? Or they're just... Oh, okay, this is, a tr this is a tricky one here, then. The same year that about 1,000 people set off west for Oregon, forming a huge wagon train. Number 10. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. The Aztec Empire began as an alliance of three Nahua Altapetl city-states. These three city-states ruled the area in and around the Valley of Mexico from 1428 until the combined forces of the Spanish conquistadors and their native allies under Hernán Cortés defeated them in 1521. Aztec culture had rich and complex mythological and religious traditions, as well as achieving remarkable architectural and artistic accomplishments. Meanwhile, in England, Oxford University was already well established. It has no known date of foundation, but there is evidence of teaching as far back as 1096, making it the oldest university in the English-speaking world and the world's second oldest university in continuous operation. It grew rapidly from 1167 when Henry II banned English students from attending the University of Paris. Number 11. Harvard University didn't offer calculus classes for the first few years after the school was established. Modern calculus was developed in 17th century Europe by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who independently of each other, first published their findings around the same time. But elements of it appeared in ancient Greece, then in China and the Middle East, and still later again in medieval Europe and in India. Harvard was established in 1636 and is the United States' oldest institution of higher learning and its history, influence and wealth have made it one of the world's most prestigious universities. Calculus was off the curriculum for the first few years for obvious reasons. It hadn't been recognized yet. I find it astonishing that the oldest university in the United States is even older than such an important scientific breakthrough. Number 12. Ecstasy was invented the same year the Titanic sank. The unsinkable type guys some of these are really good and some of these are i feel like some of these are a stretch don't get me wrong they definitely existed at the same time we can probably go date for date on that one but i'm not sure if we should be conflating like when things were mainly used right but i guess that's not the point of the video the point of the video i think is to point out that this did exist when this existed in any form i'm guessing Titanic sank in 1912, going down in the North Atlantic Ocean, four days into the ship's maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. In the same year, pharmaceutical giant Merck was interested in developing substances that stopped abnormal bleeding, and one of its chemists, Anton Kollisch, synthesized MDMA to avoid a patent by German rival Bayer. The drug was of no particular interest to Merck at the time, and they only came back to research the substance sporadically over the next few years. It wasn't until 1975 that psychoactive effects of the drug began to be taken seriously and recreational use spread thereafter through personal networks of psychotherapists, psychiatrists, users of psychedelics and yuppies. So yes, everyone who died on the Titanic never got the chance to taste this drug. Good for them. Good for them. Number 13. Microsoft was founded while Spain was still a fascist dictatorship. Right. A highly controversial figure within Spain, Franco, Franco is seen as a divisive leader. Supporters credit his strong anti-communist and nationalist views, economic policies, preservation of traditional Spanish practices, and support of the monarchy of Spain as positive influences over the nation. 
Critics disparage him as an autocratic dictator who violently suppressed opposition and dissent, banned culture seen as non-Spanish, used concentration camps and forced labor and provided much support to the Axis powers during World War II. My, um, my wife is Spanish, guys. And um, whew, my wife's uh, grandfather uh, on both sides and great-grandfather on both sides were deleted by him, right? Um, he was also well, like, like super friends with the the guy who um, who Jamaicans like worship, Haile Selassie, right? Um, there, guys, he's not he. There's nothing good about this this man, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, there are people still in Spain. You know, again, I, I live in Spain half the year, right? So um, I have to qualify that so people that just our new here understand kind of what I'm talking about at least guys. Um, and the thing about that is, is that there are still people in Spain who love this man. Right. Um, and it's, just, it's like, okay, you, you love that man and you love the mustache man also. And then Mussolini. Right. Uh, and it's just like, bro, how do you, like, how do you deal with yourself like that? You get what I'm saying here? guys? like, why are you, why would you be the person that says, you know what? This man was a good man. Um, uh, that's weird, bro. Right? I mean, I understand the concept of, 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 you know, patriotism to a certain extent. But when you start getting into, like, the nationalist view of things, um, it, things start to get very weird. Right? Um, and Spain specifically is not large enough of a, of a nation to... To do something like this, if that makes any sense, guys. The, it's not a, it's not really a great idea. There's always been, um, there's always been like this, uh, in a sense, immigration to Spain, right? I mean, specifically the part of Spain that I live in, um, it was historically, you know, North African, but were basically the most of the people that were there. The largest castle still in Spain was built by the North Africans that went. Guys, you understand what I'm saying here, guys? It's such, such a weird thing to say uh, these things. And, you know, Franco was a, was a terrible, terrible human, bro. Um, but all right, let's get it. Franco ruled Spain as a fascist state up until his death in 1975, aged 82. This was the same year that Microsoft was founded by Paul Allen and Bill Gates and the beginning of a new... This, You see what I'm saying? This, this is a stretch, guys. This is a stretch. ...era in computer technology. Number 14. Artist Pablo Picasso died in 1973, the same year. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was released. And that's what's funny about uh, Picasso is that um, a lot of people think Picasso was like from like the 1800s, 1700s. In all actuality, Picasso was alive, bro. Right? He was he was there. There, there are color images of, of the man. Pablo Picasso <laughs> is regarded as one of the most influential... He's from Malaga, Spain. ...special artists of the 20th century. Among his most famous works are the Proto-Cubist Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, 1907, and Guernica, 1937, a dramatic portrayal of the bombing of Guernica by the German and Italian air forces during the Spanish Civil War. Unlike some other great artists who died young, Picasso lived a long and full life until he passed away in 1973, which was, coincidentally, the same year that one of the most groundbreaking and progressive albums ever was released, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. With an estimated 45 million copies sold, it is Pink Floyd's most successful album and one of the best-selling worldwide. It has been remastered and re-released several times and covered in its entirety by several acts. It produced two singles, Money and Us and Them, and is often regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time. I would love to play you some pieces of this album, but that would most likely end with the takedown of this video. But let's be real, if anyone here doesn't know Dark Side of the Moon, you are more in need of a lesson in culture than in history. And finally, number 15. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was published in the summer of 2007, the same summer the first iPhone model was released. The seventh and last book in the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was released in 2007, ending the series that began in 1997 with the publication of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That same year, something came along that has probably done more to kill children's interest in reading more than anything else. The first iPhone. <laughs> Bro, I remember the first iPhone came out. 
considering that I still have mine. That the first iPhone seems like a vintage phone now, it's impressive how fast time goes by. And that's exactly why I yeah, included this fact on terribly this list. responsive. That was almost 20 years ago, and at least to me, this really feels like another era. But that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's mm. video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so as an overall presentation, I do think the presentation was solid uh, of, this, of this information. I, I guess if you did not know a good amount of these things, um, this video could definitely help you uh, in, in, in that, uh, that, that way, at least. Right? Um, but some of these felt like absolute stretches. Um, but listen, he didn't, there are no mistruths here. There's a, you know what I'm saying here, guys? It's all factual, but <laughs> it's a stretch, bro. Right? But all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.